course, the main trouble was, you see, he was interested in teaching very much. He wanted to teach piano. But there was a piano teacher in, in New York behind every lamppost. And failing that, he wanted to do ethnomusicology. Well, we didn't have it yet. Today, uh, every university has uh, ethnomusicology. In fact, all you need is a, is a tape recorder and a round trip to Kenya, and you're in the business. Bartok traveled to work by subway. On March 25th, 1941, he turned 60. Hardly anybody noticed. In December, America entered the war. The next April, after a four-month trip, Peter arrived to join his parents. He found his father in weakened health. Well, it was very difficult to help him. Everybody tried. Not everybody, but uh, the people who really understood him. Everybody tried. But uh, first of all, he, he wanted to know what's behind the offer. It was the, a form of integrity that is not endemic with musicians. Bartok had written no new music since his string quartet number six, finished just before leaving Hungary. The work is played here by the Orford Quartet. In 1942, Bartok's health grew worse. He considered giving up concerts entirely. Then, his appointment at Columbia University was not renewed. Bartok was in despair. He became feverish. His weight dropped. In February 1943, while speaking at Harvard, he collapsed. For weeks, his life hung in the balance. It was leukemia. His close friend, the violinist Josef Zigetti, remembers. At rehearsals with Kusevitsky for a Boston Symphony concert, I explained that Bartok was in a hospital. And all we could do was try to lift his spirits. To this he replied, I will visit him and ask him to write a new work for me. Bartok tried to refuse. Kusevitsky insisted. Finally, Bartok said yes. month of May. Suddenly, Bartok's leukemia went into remission. He began to gain weight. By July, he was strong enough to be sent north, into the mountains. The place chosen was Saranac Lake in northern New York State.
landscape not unlike Transylvania, Bartok's courage returned. The expenses were paid by the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. In August, he began to compose for the first time in nearly four years, music for a great orchestra and conductor. Cared for by Dita in this simple guest house, shared with other convalescents, in a tiny upstairs bedroom and porch, and downstairs in the living room where there was a piano, working almost day and night for seven weeks, Bartok wrote his largest orchestra work since the Kossuth Symphony of so long ago. On October 8th, it was finished. He called it Concerto for Orchestra. The meaning of this music and of Bartok's life is aptly summed up by his friend Yehudi Menem. Every nation, every tribe, every race who is distinctive needs a spokesman need someone to reflect their music back to them in terms of the more sophisticated, intellectual, and, uh, how shall I say, more formed, uh, formal works that one can say, this is me, a work of art. Uh, he gave them a public voice on the platform of the world. Bella Bartok will continue. Arts and Entertainment News, Sunday, July 27th. Breakfast with Seiji Ozawa, music director of the world-renowned Boston Symphony. Young podium heartthrob and leader of the Boston Pops, Keith Lockhart. And John Williams, Academy Award-winning composer and longtime conductor of the Boston Pops, now its conductor laureate. This powerhouse trio will join forces on August 5th for a day-long celebration called Tanglewood on Parade. Among other standout events, one of the world's most popular violinists, Itzhak Perlman, performs this Thursday evening. Clarinet... Bartok's reprieve lasted two years. He wrote a solo violin sonata for Yehudi Menuhin called The Greatest Such Work Since Bach and began two concertos, one for viola and one for piano. In August 1945, he was stricken again. The piano concerto, a parting gift for Dita, was almost finished when he was taken to the medical center on September 24th. I spent the night there in the hospital uh, was a nurse and uh, I think we both were sleeping it was very still everything and at the morning time came there Peter and we were there together till uh, till mid mid time and then uh, then began he my husband began to be uh, to be worse and then it was september 26th 1945 the war was over erindultam vidékre september I had gone to the country from Budapest on September 25. 
where I read the news that Bela Barthok had been taken to a hospital. A few days later came a cable from my brother. By then, here, we all knew. There was a big radio program and fine newspaper stories. Well, it was a sad affair. There was a handful of people, no eulogies. Everyone was stunned and uh, sad, and all of us probably had the same ideas that I had, and that people have had ever since the death of Schubert and some of the others. A few more years, of life, and we would have had some few more great masterpieces. In an editorial, Lang called Bartok the blade of intelligence drawn from its sheath. But the final word belongs, as it always does, to the artist, in his music and in his own voice. <laughs> The body cannot walk on the Danube. The mouth will never drink again from the glass. Only from the crystal clear spring. <laughs> 